Welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to the OSAP. This is video two, the second part of the Sick OS 1.2. In part one, we were able to exploit the web uh, server, the web application, to gain a uh, shell. It was a basic system shell where we were able to type in a URL with a command and basically be able to uh, execute system commands. In this video, we're going to show you how to get a reverse shell and then how to escalate to root uh, if we can. <clears throat> so most of my videos I do live and I try to do everything um, real time. This video, I had some off time and I didn't have internet so I was messing around my Mac and uh, trying to dig at it. And I, I wish I would have kept some of the clips that I was trying to shoot because there was a lot of bloopers. Um, as you see, when we get to the exploit to gain root, um, it's very simple to do once you know what to do, but I try to be crafty and I try to make it a little bit more unique or challenging. And, uh, I try to write my own C application that would add the user mic and then add me to the pseudo group. So basically, uh, it would execute my code and basically I would have access that way. Unfortunately, for some reason it would execute but not ever add the user or pseudo um and the reason i knew it executed is because i had an echo statement to echo uh, a log file to create a log to make sure that it was actually running and that also allowed me to uh, know how often uh chrome was running on the machine and this all makes sense as we go through the process here but for some reason it would not execute my code and the crazy part about it is once i gained root i went back and reran my code as root and it worked fine so there must have been something else wrong or that might be another security setting that's stopping it. But you'll see uh, some of the issues that you'll face uh, with this as we go through the, the process right now. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so in the last video, we used Burp uh, basically uh, to upload our co uh, code using a put statement, basically abusing the HTTP methods uh, options or HTTP, yeah, HTTP method options, and we're able to upload uh, code into the web server. Now, this web server has a multitude of firewall policies that's really limiting you uh, to what you can do outbound and inbound. And in the last video, we discussed a way to show you which ports were allowed outbound. And we discovered we can do AD443 and AD80 outbound. Um, I wasn't having a lot of great luck for AD80, so I, I kept everything to 443. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to upload a reverse shell uh, from Pentest Monkey to the web server and then execute that reverse shell to gain access so we can start doing some of our enumeration and determine how to get uh, root access. All right. All right. So we have downloaded the Pentest Monkey script to our local machine here. And before we use it, we have to make some modifications. So we're going to do a... Uh, vi of sh.php and it's just what I called it for simplicity and whenever you download this script from pentest monkey uh, it's pentestmonkey.net you can see the URL right here you need to modify some uh, values so you have to change it to your IP address so that's your local IP it's going to connect outbound back to you so you're you need to set up a listener so you can set up a netcat listener uh, with dash lvp uh, space port number and the port number here is going to be 443 now, if you're running Apache on your uh, box with a uh, 443 listening as well, you're going to have to shut down your Apache for this to work. Not a big deal. And then basically what we're going to do here is we're going to copy this, all this data, and we're going to paste this into our, uh, into a burp over here, which we're going to send that over to the browser then. So I'm going to copy all this. And then copy, make sure you copy the whole thing. I didn't get that, so I'm just gonna manually type it down here. All right, and then we're gonna do a question mark, close the program. We're gonna name this to SHR for uh, shell remote, uh, reverse shell basically. You can call it whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna hit go here. That's just created to upload my code to the server. And just like before, we're going to navigate over to the server and make sure it's actually there. So we're in the test directory. You can see SH, 
shr.php. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to start a netcat listener. All right, so that's listening now. And all we're going to do is come back over here. We're going to execute this. And boom. So we're on the sick OS, right? So it's an Ubuntu box. Um, so Linux, you get the kernel version. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to download the uh, the Linux uh, enumeration script, the Python one, um, and basically run through that to get some enumeration going. You go through some basic enumeration yourself. Um, and let's see what the script basically tells us. So, all right, so basically we download the script again, and uh, it's Linux prove checker .py. I copy the script. I'm going to go here, edit, copy. We come back over to our burp proxy here. We're going to highlight all this. I'm going to remove it. All right. Control V. All right. I'm going to come up here. We're going to change the name. And let's give this a name of whatever. We can call it L enum or whatever you want to call it. Dot py for Python. We hit go. It creates the script for us. Come back over our box. We're going to navigate to cd slash bar www test, right? Because that's where our file is. We have our lenum. We're going to do a true mode 777 lenum.py. Now we're going to do a python lenum.py. All right. So let's minimize some of this stuff and make this a little bigger to see it. So of course, at the end, it gives us some ideas of some uh, privilege escalation exploits to run. This box does have GC, uh, GCC on it, uh, so you can compile. The one thing I did notice is I went through some of these and I couldn't get the exploitations to work using the kernels. Different compilation errors or different, uh, just it didn't run. You can see here we have some escape sequences. Uh, similar to one of the other VMs we just did, uh, Brain Pan, where you can escape from possible gain root access. Uh, different tools are running. You can see Netcats on this box, Python, Perl, and a few other tools. <clears throat> so let's scroll to the top here. So we have our SIG OS, we have our network configuration, mounts. Now, something here to look for the mounts is. You want to avoid areas with no execute because there are some vulnerabilities that can make use of this. So we see that some of these shares are, have the no execute. Um, and you, you'll see why this makes sense uh, when I explain how I get rid of this box. Schedule cron jobs, all right? So we have uh, cron jobs that are running. And the interesting thing here is check rootkit. So check rootkit is running as part of the uh, daily cron. And what we're going to notice here, the check rootkit, is one of two things. Uh, we can either use this script here to look up the version of this, because there are known vulnerabilities for check rootkit. Or, um, so using the script, we can scroll down here. And there is a section of all installed software, uh, enumeration process and applications. And you can see here, right here, check rootkit is version 0 0.49. So, if we Google um, check rootkit 0 0.49, you'll see that there is a known exploit for that. And basically what happens with that exploit is if you put a executable file inside the temp directory and call it update, the script will automatically execute it as root. Now the key there is you can't, temp directory cannot have no execute set to it. If it does, then it will not execute the script. It won't work. <clears throat> so the other way we can see this outside of the script is if we just do check rootkit dash v when oops sorry check rootkit dash capital v and we can see that it's version 0 0.49 we can copy this copy go back over to our browser we have a lot of vms running so it's a little slow Now you can also use Metasploit for this. 
The Metasploit way is much, it, it, it's pretty good, it's pretty fast. The thing with Metasploit is on the OCP, you can only use Metasploit um, automation or tools one time. You can use the multi-handler as much as you want, but you can't use the external exploitation or interpreter uh, more than once. So reading through here tells you where the vulnerability exists within the application. So uh, shows the code and then down here explains it steps to reproduce. Put an execu executable file named update with non-root owner. So basically it's not owned by the root and the temp and make sure that the temp is not mounted no execute. So as you saw in the FS tab above, it wasn't marked as no execute. So this should work. <clears throat> now, two things we don't know. We don't know how often the cron daily executes. So one way we could have done that is we can basically create a simple update command that echoes out um, to the log file so we can see how often it executes. By doing that, I was able to discover that it runs approximately every minute. It'll execute your code. Now, you can try to get crafty and create different updates and um, maybe you can get it to work, maybe you can't get it to work. Um, I've seen uh, several different things. I've seen people um, change sudoers and add the, the www user into there. I've seen people just do simple shells. I was trying to be crafty and I created a script. Let me show you the script I created. Uh, maybe you guys can see what's wrong with my code. And uh, you can say, hey, Mike, this is your problem and why it didn't work. Okay. okay. So basically simple C code. And what I did here too, is this is some older code, is I actually put the uh, escape sequences in front of the dollar signs, which fixed the password. And what this is doing is it's going to uh, echo the date and the time to the local uh, exe.log file. It's going to run the user add command, um, set my home directory by default. And the password is going to put in my uh, hash password here. And then it's going to set my uh, shell and basically add my user Mike. And then after that, it's going to basically add me to the sudo group. For some reason, this does not work uh, through the automated method. But when I manually run it as root, it does work. So if you have an idea how to fix this or what I did wrong here, let me know. Post in the comments below. Uh, send me a message. But the simplest way to fix this is um, remember we have netcat on the machine. The problem with the netcat that's on this machine, and after I show you, is if we do netcat 192.168 and uh, we'll do four four we'll do uh, yeah four four three. Excuse me. So basically we're gonna do a netcat out. Um, the dash e should allow us to define a program. Now the problem here is the dash e doesn't exist in this version of netcat. So basically, if you Google netcatting without netcat or reverse shells without netcat, you'll see tons of articles out there about different ways you can do different shells. Um, so basically, one of my favorite ways to do it is using this script. So this script is uh, a pretty famous script, and I actually found it um, in my GCIH notes. Uh, Ed Scotus has a great article in the SANS forum. Many people actually have great articles around different ways of doing netcat without netcat, creating reverse shells. But basically we're going to use the make node command and we're going to basically create a backpipe and through that backpipe we're going to shovel bin sh over to our box. So what we need to do here is we got to change the pen test box to 192.168.1.6. So we're going to copy this and come back over to this box. We're going to do cd slash temp ls all right, and now on this box, we're going to do echo, paste that command in, output it to update, true mode 777 update. We're going to do exit, we're going to restart our listener. And what I do here is I'm going to just set a timer so I know within the 60 second window it should come back as a shell. If it doesn't come back as a shell, I know there's a problem. So look, we're connected to Ubuntu. If we do ID, we are now root. So pretty simple uh, to get root once you understand how to get root. The whole idea for SickOS, as you can see in the flag file, and actually let's uh, open up the flag file here. The whole idea for um, SickOS is really move away from using the tools you know, 
no automation. Um, there's not a simple exploit out there. It really makes you understand the enumeration process and what you're looking for within the system to get that level of access as roots. Um, it's really important to understand how you enumerate and get the data and what data you're looking at. Um, I can tell you over the last few of these Vuln bon, uh, Hub VMs I've done, going through the enumeration using that script has really made me understand that script a lot more and what I'm looking at as I'm reading it to be able to get these root level accesses. So that wraps up SickOS uh, 1.2. Um, it was a pretty cool box. Um, I love using that HTTP methods uh, exploitation. In a previous job, we had a lot of people that constantly told us, oh, that's not a vulnerability. That's how it needs to be. Uh, you can't exploit it. Um, I had a coworker. Um, we did all our pen testing in a development environment. So if we took something down, it wasn't a big issue. And uh, he actually used the exploit to delete the databases. And uh, developers quickly took attention to that and uh, changed their tune to that is not a problem to that is a problem and they fixed it. Thankfully, he only did in the development uh, area and he didn't really get in much trouble for that. But you can see the power of this exploit and what can actually be done with it and why it's important to really uh, make sure that you understand what it is and how to protect it and not leave it open on your system, especially in this day and age. All right, um, so that wraps up for SickOS. As always, comment below, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, for those people who have subscribed, Awesome, thank you very much. I'm up to 26 subscribers as of yesterday. Um, I do have other videos coming out. I uh, have some videos around the CCDC uh, Mid-Atlantic pre-qualifiers that hopefully I have some time to put together. I'm still editing my hog hunt video. Uh, so hopefully I'll get that done within the next couple of days, get that up online. And uh, more to come around the OSCP as well. All right guys, um, have a great night and I'll talk to you later.